Hello, good morning and welcome to the New Forest North's daily blog at the moment and uh, we're quite enjoying this and thank you so much for the new subscribers that are jumping onto our channel and thank you for the love and support we're getting from our community. I think it was well received, um, Hamlin's pictures Jad were well received by our viewers and uh, there's one or two people out there that are showing an interest in um, uh, doing a self build so thank you Hamlin for sharing those with us and for also offering to send uh, one or two of our subscribers some of the plans and details we do appreciate that so today um, we're going to be giving you a, a little brief update on the purple passion clutch that's uh, I think they've been in their shed box for a week and one day now how often do you find Jared with sheddings concerned how quickly do they normally shed from being hatchlings to being post shed hatchlings what's the time frame you're finding i think it's different between each clutch but usually on average about a week maybe a bit longer yeah so we think give them about a week some some can shed out earlier than that but if you give them about a week you should start to see them shedding out we've got two that have shed out and we'll give you a peep sneak but jared would like to present that next week the whole clutch fully shed out and then we can contrast and look at all the different genes something to look forward to next week and the other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering the clown girls today. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, nearly 20 clown females in our collection, Jared, which is quite a collection. When we first got into the hobby, we couldn't find a clown female, a mature clown female, could we, Jared? Everybody was holding on to their female clowns, and you can understand why. They're so popular that people don't want to give them up. Now they're becoming a little bit more popular. There's more girls out there, but even still, there's a shortage of girls. So we've done well to produce our own het clowns from, um, again, uh, the boy that we showed yesterday, which is Joker, has been responsible for producing most of the hets. So when we show you the het girls, the daddy will be jo Joker. And we've also managed to source and buy in some hatchlings from Europe and, and one or two from the UK. But most of our babies have to come from Europe because the supply last year for female clowns was next to nothing <laughs> and as soon as they come up they go so if you want to get a female clown keep your eye on Morph Market and uh, get in there early because if you leave it a few days they go like like that don't they Jared? They're so de in demand so any breeder out there that's got them that puts them out there they tend to get good prices for them and I think we paid 550 to 600 pounds for one inchy clown last year didn't we Jared? and she was a hatchling and um, you know, so that I think they do hold their value very well because of what they produce. So, we're going to have a look at all of those. We're also going to do an ultrasound on one of our big female girls, Queenie, at the end. And then we're going to give a shout out to one of my favourite channels, which is uh, Reptile Barn. And it's uh, Colin, I believe, at Reptile Barn. He's been on YouTube since 2017. He's been developing a wonderful following. I think he's got 2.5 thousand subscribers. He's based in Alaska and it's a family reptile show. I like it. He's real. He shares the good and the bad, which I always love. And I think he's got some amazing animals. And I just watched one of his videos yesterday and he just um, showed us an update on one of his clutches. So we'll have a quick look at him and go and give him some love. But also we want to talk about mental health, Jared, is the topic of today. Mental health and the hobby. And have you got any thoughts or feelings on, on that, Jared, yourself, in terms of how the hobby helps improve our mental health? I think um, a lot of people find that spending time with animals helps with their mental health, because they'll know that animals will never judge them, but the animals just give love. I think mean, that's one of the biggest things with keeping animals. Um, I think also, if you're uh, putting yourself out there on social media or on YouTube, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. you're going to receive some opposition and also some positive uh, vibes as well yes so you've got to be prepared that if you do have um, if you do easily get depressed or if you have any mental health issues um, that it can be triggered from people commenting and I don't know like how you say bullying on YouTube um, so it's important that we're there as a community for each other and that we help strengthen and uh, make them feel better rather than putting them down yeah and I'd agree with that analysis because I mean, I've had YouTube channels for the best part of 15 years. I have another YouTube channel, which is a fishing channel, and um, I've got about 2,500 subscribers on that one. And it's all about my fishing journey, and I share my journey. And 99% of the comments on there are very positive, but there's always 1% that attack you. <laughs> and usually it's people that are very jealous of your success or very jealous of what you're achieving. And the green-eyed goddess of envy does feature quite heavily on uh, social media and I think a lot of people 
who've been on social media will recognize what I'm talking about where you're you know you are attacked in very subtle ways you're attacked in very um, real ways and people say things they wouldn't say to your face and they hide behind avatars that they keep changing keyboard warriors keyboard warriors or trolls word. so if you do decide to go for a YouTube channel prepare yourself and brace yourself for opposition but I, I believe there needs to be an opposition in all things anyway and that opposition will always be there but we've got to learn how to manage that opposition we've got to learn how to not allow it to affect our psycho which is really hard because you know there's top breeders out there I know and aware of that have mental health issues Brian is very open at um, Brian Barczyk uh, sorry, Brian Barczyk is really open with his mental health issues and his channel is very good in the sense that he talks about his mental health issues and how it's been impacted by some of the criticisms of the past and he's taking professional support and he's got his own internal systems and counselling and his animals are huge therapy. He wakes up to those beautiful animals that heal him every day and uh, he, if he spends time with those animals his mental health is definitely much improved. And I'm the same way. I mean I have uh, from time to time mental health issues and I think most of us do. I think the, the, the honesty is that we need to be honest with where we are and not worry if we do have a mental health issue because stresses of life can cause problems Anxiety is built from within going out, but stress comes from the pressures of external factors. And there's two or three ways of dealing with those pressures, and we need to have outlets. Snakes is a great outlet for stress relief. And one of the reasons why this hobby has gone so far so quickly during the COVID years is because families and individuals at home, and pet sales right across the board, people are taking comfort from their pets. And I think that's contributed to this industry explosion is because people take comfort from their snakes. And I think it's a really good thing. And Emily, um, who's had health issues in the past, who's now doing so much better, she got into snakes with me two or three years ago and I saw her lift her. It lifted her feeling inside and it gave her so much comfort during her most difficult health issues that she had. And so I think a lot of the time we need to really think about the blessings that come from having these animals. They help us, comfort us, and they give us a focus and something to wake up. I wake up in the morning now and I want to get out of bed early because I'm looking forward to seeing the reptiles. Whereas without that, if I was feeling quite low, I wouldn't want to stay in bed and not get going. But this is energising me and it's given me a great reason to enjoy and to connecting <clears throat> with the community of like-minded people. And I find myself, when I hear comments and attacks on people out there, I want to show some extra love to people and say to them, look, you know, um, there are things that we can do to protect ourselves and one of the things that I've done is there's three things that you can do to protect yourself from bullying on cyber bullies. Number one, you can politely ask them to withdraw their comment and to apologise and most of them won't. Um, number two, you can say to them if you persist with these comments then I'm going to have to remove you from my channel and that's one way, you know, you can be in control of your channel. And number three, if it's particularly persistent and extreme you can report to the YouTube um, YouTube and they've got a duty to remove anyone that's um, attacking any uh, any individual or family uh, on YouTube and I found I had to do that twice last year on our new channel here and since I've done that the attacks have been zero I've had no attacks on my channel for six months and I put out a bullying video that I think it was nearly six months ago because it was starting to affect me all these negative comments and even though I've got resilience and I'm strong and I'm quite firm in my head they do start to wear away, wear, away, wear away at you and they start to erode your enthusiasm and excitement for the hobby and so sometimes you've got to dig really deep to kind of overcome that and still be prepared to share your material even though you're being attacked in different areas and what I found was that um, when I did the research um, in the UK there is a designated metropolitan police that can investigate people remotely who attack your channel and they might think they're hiding behind a phone or hiding behind a laptop but the technology now is that they can home in on anyone uh, whether that's a paedophile, whether that's um, extremely abusive people that are hiding behind avatars and they can visit their homes and they can confiscate their material and then um, charge them with criminal, criminal sentences and I think having those teeth in the UK, I don't know what it's like around the rest of the world, but actually knowing that in extreme cases of abuse, um, the authorities can get involved and therefore there's another safety net for us. So if anyone out there is experiencing abuse on social media, study your rights, 
um, be willing to look at those opportunities to stop this from happening. And I think the other thing is that we've got to build a strong community of like-minded people. And this is another reason why networking is important because when you're networking with like-minded caring people that have a lot of love and concern for each other, um, you can have safety in numbers and uh, you know these people can be identified and they can be taken out of the equation if, if need be. So anyway, that's enough on the, on the um, mental health issues. Let's now have a look at some snakes because uh, we want to have a quick look at the snakes and should we have a quick peek, Jared? Let's have a, a little, little look and see what we've got here. So um, there's a couple of little sheds. Okay. Now, Jad, do you know any idea which animals have shed out? Yeah, we've got one Mojave that's shed out and then one Purple Passion. Yeah, you can see the brightness of the Mojave and you can see the clarity of the Purple Passion. But uh, what we'll do is we'll hold, hold it back. You can see the little sheds in here. And what we do is over the next two or three days, they'll all shed out. <coughs> and, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, Jad, what are you doing on a daily basis to help them shed out? What's the procedure for helping actually shed? Um, I just make sure they're sprayed down, make sure they've got a lot of uh, moisture in their rub. Yeah. That's it. Okay, fine. And you do that on a daily basis? Yeah, I make sure their water's topped up and I make sure they've yep. got enough uh, moisture in the tub. Yeah, absolutely. Remember, they've come out of 100% humidity in their eggs. So you do need to give them quite a lot of um, humidity to help them shed nicely. And so we'll give you a full update on those. But Jared, let's move on to the clown girls. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll go through some of our adult clowns first. And then we'll show you some of our baby clowns in the light box. And then we'll do an ultrasound and then we'll do a shout out. So let's start off at this end here. So we've got um, the first clown girl we're going to show you is uh, Hi, Hi Koya. She's one of Koya. Yeah, she's one of our hatchlings from last year. And she's, she's a normal head clown. One hundred percent normal head clown. There you go, Jad. Father is um, Joker. Joker. And I'm trying to remember who the mother was, Jad. Do you remember? Um, I think it was my cinnamon girl. So? Is it, who's, who's the baby? Akoya. Yeah. I she was remember. born in August 2020, so we'll she's have a to look who the mother is. Yeah. But. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. So we've got Xena. Now this one is a pastel twilight pet clown. And what's a pastel twilight, Jared? That's a pastel and a cinnamon and a spot nose together. Yeah. And the mother was Venus, who's a pastel twilight. Pastel twilight, and the father is jo Joker. And she just shed out today. And she's about 800, 900 grams. So she'll be hopefully a future mother next year. So these are our sub adults we're showing you here at the moment. And we've got another one down here. What have we got here, Jack? Kalissa. Kalissa. She's about 1,200 grams. So she probably won't come into this year's breeding ground, but she'll be ready for next year. She's a lesser clown. She's a lesser clown. And we imported her from Europe. She's very beautiful. That's lovely. And then they, down here we've got two other animals here. So here we've got, what have we got here? Let's just have a look and see. This is a vanilla spot nose. Oh no, this is a spot nose head clown. Yeah, a uh, spot nose head clown. That's for the Batman projects. And she's about 1200. Lovely head stamp. Yeah, I do love that head stamp. And I do love spot nose and clown. And over here we have another head clown, I think it is. This one I think has the same but with vanilla. This one's got, this is a vanilla spot nose head clown. And she's a little bit bigger. And I think she is, well, she might just be a vanilla, Jared. I don't think she's spot nose. Yeah, I think she is. <laughs> she's a vanilla head clown. Yeah, just a vanilla. But the vanilla is a wonderful gene to have in clown, as you can see from our friend Rob um, at Royal Balls, has just produced some amazing pastel vanilla spot nose clowns, and they are beautiful so we thank <coughs> we thank Rob for getting us into that gene <coughs> um, what other ones have we got here so we've got girls, your Calypso. favorite girl Calypso Let's see how she's doing she's a pastel clown, clown 100% for pied yeah. and she is actually big enough to breed she's 1700 grams and she's got follicles building <coughs> Jam's so gonna get a drink do you want to just share the other ones while I get a drink so this one is a bongo, that's 66% hit for clown. Hoping to prove her out next year probably. But she's got some amazing patterns on her. We 
we've also got a Enchi Clown. Yeah. Pistachio. She's a lovely girl. She's got a lovely temperament. She loves to come out and play. She's about 11, 1200. So these are sub adults for next year. This is a fire that's 100% het for clown. Is that fern? Yeah. She showed out today, I think. Fire clowns are lovely. Beautiful animals, Joe. So again, the father would have been Joker. So this is one we produced ourselves. So it's important when you've got your clown projects, you might be having babies, you might be having sub adults and you've got adults. I think it's important in your projects to have every year you're rolling your clowns through. So you've got babies coming through the system, you've got sub adults that'll be moving up. So you've always got something exciting to look forward to. And hopefully with the years of breeding and crossbreeding and interbreeding, you will get beautiful examples and your clown clutches will get better and better and better. So it's important to keep feeding into the system and have something come to excite you each year. And I think this is what we're trying to do. We've, this is our third year doing this and then we've got three generations of clowns. And I think they say after the third year, things get really exciting. And we're feeling it's exciting now, aren't we, Jared? Yeah. But next year, can you, <coughs> can you see the potential of hitting Batmans? And there's so much that we can hit that we're getting excited about. Okay, anything else, Jared? You got a lesser next clown here. This is an update on the girl that gave us our first visual clowns this year. And this is Jupiter. She, she was off food for quite a while. Just have a little look at her now, Jared, and see how she's doing. Yeah, she's almost completely recovered. Yeah, she's pounding food. Um, she went through the best part of six weeks where she wasn't eating. It really worried us, didn't it, Jared? Mm. And she's such a beautiful animal. And, you know, I think when you breed an animal, you have to be aware they go through so much sacrifice to give us a clutch that they need to be carefully reconditioned and respected. And we might even rest her this year. If she needs a year's rest, we're going to give it to her and give her the respect that she needs. And we've got a lot of visual lesser clowns as well that we're breeding this year. So yeah. she's not. So she's given us a kickstart to our first baby uh, clowns and <clears throat> she produces wonderful clowns for us. We'll show you the babies in a minute. Over here, Jan. That's the fire. We've done that we've one. done the fire. Which one haven't we done? This one here? Yeah. So what have you got here? That's the vanilla spot nose, I think. Yeah. What an example of a beautiful hat. And she's beautiful, isn't she? She does want to come out. <laughs> and I'll just take her out a little bit and just show you what she looks like. Maybe we should put her in the light box, Jared, and... I wouldn't mess too much because we're feeding her. Yeah, but we'll have a little look and see. She's got the white spot on her tail, the head clown markings. You see that, Jared? What, that? See the little... Every snake has that. Well, oh, she's definitely got a white spot on her tail. Um, let's have a little look at her. Yeah, she's beautiful. We're really pleased to um, have her in our collection. And she's not far off, Jared. She's about 1300. So. Again, she'll probably be next year. Let's move on to the baby hatchlings now, Jared, or is there one more? One oh, more. Of course, Adela is probably, once she's fully grown, Jared, she's probably going to be the most exciting of all our projects. I know you're excited about it, Jared. Oh, Just I love talk, her. talk us through. Orange Dream, Yellow Belly, Leopard, Clown. I think she's pastel as well. 100% head clown. So she's got four genes in her? Yeah. And what are your plans, Jared? What are you hoping to do with her? Well, I'd love to create everything that's inside of her into a clown, but I also want to put um, my grab my boy's pastel gravel head clown to her as well, because it'd be wicked to hit some highway pastel leopard orange dream clowns. Yeah, that's an awesome project, Jad. Right, and she's about thirteen hundred. I think she'll be good for next season, Jad. So we've only got another year before these beautiful girls are ready to go. And on this side, Jared, what's what These are got? our big breed girls. So we've got Mango. Mango. We've seen her before. Yeah. And she's pastel lesser. Yeah, she's and she's 2.4, 2.5. Hopefully she'll give us a clutch this year. She's a nice girl. Yeah. And the other one we've got is... We've got Xena. Xena, who's the... Clown hit albino. She's hit for albino. And we forgot to give her a mention to her husband yesterday on the house. Another male that we've oh, got. Yeah. Yazoo. Yazoo. So Yazoo is a visual albino head clown. Head clown. So we're hoping to produce some albino clowns. Uh, here we've got Bubbles, who we ultrasound the other day. Yeah. And she lesser clown. And we've not put a male to her yet, have we, Jared? Not yet. And who's who are we planning to put to her? Is it produce? Oh, I don't remember. 
I think we're, we're producing them. double hits with her, I think. I think we're going to produce double hits, so we might end up putting Bowser to her. And that would be amazing. Bowser's our dream school boy. <laughs> Can you imagine putting a dream school boy into a clown? So here we've got a cinnamon hat clown. <clears throat> and she's lovely. And what's her name, Jack? Uh, Cinnabon. Why don't we give her a wave to see how she's doing? And... Is she our first hatchling of the year? I think she's from that clutch, yeah. Yeah, so she was born end of March and she's six months old and she's about 400 grams now isn't she and the mother was your beautiful girl toast cinnamon yep. girl and the daddy was Joker so we're producing all these wonderful pet clowns so we can get cinnamon into our clown jeans and banana cinnamons is what we're asking on Joe. we want to be able to <coughs> when she's big enough we'll probably put a banana pet clown male to her and banana clown or I banana clown even and try to generate banana clowns which are beautiful uh, banana cinnamon clowns which I think are gorgeous any other clowns on this side Jack? do you want to show the visual clowns first so this is Lucky and you can see why she's called Lucky because of the horseshoe she's probably what two three months old she likes to bite so yeah I she's got a very that. healthy appetite she's about 250 grams and I would say that she is probably one of our favourite female clowns, would you say, Jack? Yeah, there's a horseshoe on her head, mm -hmm. which is why she's called Lucky. Yeah, and we think they're just pure clowns, I don't think the lesser or the butter never got into the visual clowns. No, they're amazing though. But they are gorgeous. Look how orange her head is. Yeah. So got that lovely burnt feeling to it, I do like it. Very much so, Jack. Am I going to get bitten is the question. You might. <laughs> <clears throat> and then she's got a bigger sister that ate literally. I think, I think she is the big one, isn't she? No, no. The oh, bigger really? One, the bigger one is actually that one that you find. I think she's bigger, Jared. About the same. And that's Linnea. She doesn't have the horseshoe, but she has a wicked neck pattern, doesn't she, Jared? Yeah. And she likes a lot. And again, she, we think she's just a she's just a pure clown. I don't think yeah, she's got much normal, there. normal clowns. Yeah, but they're beautiful. Yeah, beautiful example. We're super excited. So we've got two of our own girls coming up the ranks, and by the time they're fully mature, Jazz, we've got Hercules to be firing to, on all cylinders. So even though they don't have the codons, we've got a boy that's got four codons. Did you try to strike you? No, she was aiming towards me there, okay. so I. Uh, I pulled away pretty quick. <laughs> so yeah. she's about 300 grams now, isn't she? But no, we'll, when we put Hercules to her, I think it's going to be really wonderful. And then we've got these two other girls here. So we've got Amber, who is a pastel clown. They're both pastel clowns. They're both pastel clown girls. This one's about 2.2. She's actually building, Jared. She's feeding really aggressively. But she's a beautiful example. And we've had her for nearly, she's over three years old. But she's just starting. She was a picky feeder to start with, but now she's taking small rats. So she's definitely building. And she has locked to Joker before, but she never gave us any eggs, did she? No. But hopefully this year she may give us some. So hopefully we'll get some beautiful ones. And the other one we've got, we're going to ultrasound, and that's Queenie. Your turn to ultrasound, Jared. So I'll switch this on. Well done. And if you want to get Queenie, we'll see how big Queenie is. So Queenie we imported from Europe and say it's really hard to get hold of mature females to start your projects so we were very fortunate to find her um, but she went on a long journey and she came cold so Ooh, she's been she off was food cold. she was off food for six months wasn't she and we've got her back on food now but it was quite worrying because we thought to myself you know we spent quite a lot of money on getting a, an adult clown because they're about a thousand pounds for a, a pastel adult clown is what you'll pay and because she went through a pretty bad journey, um, we were really worried for her. But she's now, she seems to be doing a lot better now, Jad, doesn't she? And she's eating and she's growing and she's pounding food. So hopefully she's got some decent sized follicles, but we shall wait and see. We did realise that she needed a bigger hide, Jad. Because the hide was very important to her, she went on food once I gave her a big hide. Hmm. Look, look, she wants to... <laughs> we'll just uh, get some tissue just to set her down. If I turn her around, she'll I'll be just, right. Once you do that, Jan, I think she'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, we can get her relaxed. She's 
she's letting you know she's not happy. <laughs> She'll give you a, a big old bite, I tell you, if she's, yeah, she's not happy. Sure. She wanted to go on the tissue jack, because I, but look. Oh, that's right. Come on. <laughs> it's good that she wants to, she wants to feed, doesn't she? You might want to come this side so you can see the... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I can get bitten. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's just have a she's all hit, she's quick all, uh, yeah. all voice. Okay. Straighten her out. Come on, Jack. See what, what you can find. I think you found an internal organ there. Ah, what have we got there? There's something round no, there. She's bending. So oh, she's bending, so. okay. It looks like there's something coming up. Unless it's her bending. Oh, there's her bladder. So you found her bladder there, Jack. There's an egg on there. Oh, the eggs? Should I freeze it? Actually, wait, let me see. A bit more of this. Okay. That was her um, gallbladder, yeah. That was her gallbladder. So once you find the gallbladder, the eggs are very close by. And she's being very good, Jack. Very tolerant, very patient. <laughs> At the moment, yeah. See so if she stays that way. She's hissing a little bit. She's warning us. She's not completely happy, but that's a swim. That's a full bladder. Full bladder. Not swim swim bladder. bladder. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking fish at the moment. Oh, there. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Good size, Jay. No pause it again. Oh, I had a clear one. Okay. There. She's got some good eggs on her. So that's really good news. Good she's size, got a lot as well. Well done. So the thing is, a big mature girl like this is a bit more likely to give you a bigger clutch, bigger eggs. So well done, Jared. And what we'll do is we'll um, measure those and then we'll give uh, a quick shout out. We've only got a few minutes left on the video. But I think, looking at it, we'll probably measure them. And I can measure them now while you do that. Um, let's have a look, Jared. So if we go... Yeah, we can measure those. I reckon that's probably about 12 mil, 12 to 13 mil. Yeah, they're good size. I'm guessing. And then um, we just do do that once we put her back. And then we've got. So I'll come out of the way. That's really good news. That's one of the biggest follicles that we've seen this week. But it's interesting how mature females, bigger females, obviously produce their eggs earlier than the, the smaller girls coming through. So Jared's going to measure now. So one here, two, three, there's at least four on this picture right here. Which means she's probably carrying at least eight. <laughs> so we're going to measure, set, distance. I think I'll do this one here. Yeah. So we've only got two minutes left, so to be quick Jared. Get the bottom. I want to give a one minute shout out to the reptile bar. So here. Two, then. So what she's got, got 8.9 on that one. Okay, that'll do, Jack. We're about 8.9. We'll record that later. Let's do a quick shout out before we finish. We can do it. Okay, okay. We'll do a quick shout out, okay, to Colin at Reptile Bar. Here he is. So he's got 2.47 subscribers, and I really like his channel. I can say he's very realistic, he's very good with his um, animals. He's got a lot of animals that we've got. He likes the bell complex, he likes his ivories. And I'll just show you a quick video to finish. Uh, if we look at his videos, he's based in Alaska. This is his ivory clutch that he shared with us. This gives you an idea of really where we are. The reason why I work thornbury primarily is I'll because I really this. like flex flowers, thornbreeds. There you go. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. Quick reveal video. I've been looking forward to this clutch because three different males went in and uh, they've all crawled out. And so I want to show you who the father is. So Freya is a leopard ivory. Onyx is a GHI Enchi yellow belly. Prince Dreamy is a super orange dream ultramel. And Cinna is a super banana cinnamon. So all sorts of different stuff could have come out of here. Okay. You yeah. have to find out who the... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely weekend and we shall see you next time. Bye bye for now.